Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Inez Alea from the creatorgalaxy.com space station. Here in space, we are experimenting with intergalactic filmmaking skills and visual effects. In today's video, we're going to see something pretty awesome, and that's how to explode your car. Just like in the preview, you're about to see right now. All right, guys, I finally have my own car. I'm so happy to finally be driving my own car, and it's such a beauty. And but yesterday was kind of a, a little bit tense. Uh, I almost scratched it. Can you imagine like a new car and I would go and scratch it already? Anyway, let me show you. There she is. All right, let me show you up close. Alright, so that looks awesome. And no, this has not been done with a 3D car. This is actually the car in the shot. And we just keyed out, we animated it to look like it's actually reacting to the explosion. And also we're going to create some depth in our explosion uh, using some techniques. So it actually looks like it's a 3D car. All right, so without further ado, we can start with the tutorial. I will provide you with tutorial files with a link in the description below. You can go ahead and download those, but you will also need something else, and that's explosion assets. Uh, we cannot make them ourselves in Adobe After Effects. You could go potentially explode something outside, but as we are all inside right now and we're not allowed to do that, we cannot do that as well. So that option uh, falls apart as well. So you only have one more option, and that's to use stock footage and the best place to find stock footage for explosions for fire for anything action related is actionvfx.com and they are also today's video sponsor so i have been working with action vfx for a very very long time i know them very well and they're not sponsoring this video just for the sake of it it's literally because i'm a big fan of their products and i just like working with them so i reached out to them in order to make a video happen like this one right here where we will be using their products in order to create an epic car explosion uh, so yeah let's uh, get started immediately so right here we are in Adobe After Effects and I'm going to be importing the tutorial files that I have provided you with a link in the description that's a clean plate a explosion animation while well, the video and a clean plate with a car in there so let's take a closer look we're going to import that and bring this into a new folder open it up we have a clean plate with nothing in the shot. We have our video where I run to the car and act like it's exploded. And then right here we have a say, um, another clean plate, but here you can see that the lights of the car are on. But of course, if your car explodes, I don't think you have any chances of the lights still working. So that's why I took an image of my car without the lights, uh, which we can then use to um, yeah, go ahead and, and manipulate and make it look like a 3D car. So yeah, the first thing that I will do is of course, import my video and then you can also see right over here, I have a folder with action VFX. Uh, these are actually just products from their website. So I already downloaded them up front uh, just so we don't have to lose time searching for effects. But to give you a small ID, um, the best thing to do when, when you think of, a, of an explosion is to think what will you actually see happening in the shot. One, there will be maybe some dirt uh, exploding in the air. There will be some dust. So some dust waves probably. Maybe some stones or rocks from the ground are actually being blown up with it. So some debris. And uh, then you can also have the actual explosion itself. So um, the explosion and then maybe because of the explosion you have some some parts of the car falling next to the car so you will have some small uh, lingering fires uh, around it so small ground fires And actually another part of making a realistic scene is to look at as much reference as possible. So look at other real explosions and try to uh, make a combination between realistic and cinematic. Obviously the realistic way is not always the most beautiful way to make a scene look. For example, in a realistic uh, explosion, you will see spark explosions like these. I didn't really think I, I wanted them in my explosion because it just makes it look like a little bit more like a classic movie. But these are really things that, that you see when a car explodes. And actually one of the best 
best videos that I saw as a reference was from slow-mo guys and they blew up a car but it wasn't slow motion so I could really look in detail what is happening to that car. Okay so once you're done and you have everything uh, you can jump into Adobe After Effects and right here you can see what I have. I have an image of a windshield, the burn mark, the burning debris here, Dirt Blast 7. We have a dust in the front, exploding debris, extra small smoke, or maybe out of the window after the fire. Some more smaller fires, maybe for on the engine afterwards. A ground fire, some embers, the gas explosion, and a car engine. So the first thing that you want to do is obviously uh, make the car look like it's reacting to the explosion. So we're not going to add it in there. First, we're just going to look in the scene. I'm going to set this to half resolution for now. Um, and we actually move towards the car and here it's exploding, obviously. So because I'm already setting my foot for the balance. So you can see that right now something is happening that's not all right. So I will go to edit and split my layer. Uh, then I will put in my tutorial files, clean plate explosion. We can toggle this off and on to see if everything looks all right. The scene does look a little bit different. Uh, maybe without, it doesn't like here, it does have more oranges and like uh, purple tones. You could essentially go ahead and use the curves uh, and then try to kind of uh, put them next to each other. For example, we can add a rectangle right here, turn it on and now we can zoom in maybe on a different location so we actually see a bigger difference, like right here, that's a great position. So right here we can see, uh, we can bring it down a little bit, so touch, introduce a little bit of reds. This is looking like a better seam. So we have before and we have after. This does look like it's matching up now so we can delete the mask. And if we toggle in between these shots, you will still see a little bit of differences, but we don't need all of it. So the first thing that I will do here is actually um, deselect it and go with the ellipse tool around my car. And I just wanna make sure that my car is removed here. So enable this layer, press F on the keyboard, feather it quite a bit so we don't see anything going on. And we can see that this does a pretty realistic job. So obviously uh, once it explodes, the car is gone. That's always what happens. Uh, well, to me it does. Every time something explodes, it just vanishes. So we do need the image replaced that I just said uh, with, without the lights because obviously the electronics fall out because of that explosion. So I wanna bring in that image. I'm going to bring that here. Uh, let's double check these as well. So these don't look like, uh, like I think the, the tripod just moved a touch. Uh, so we are going to lower the opacity to something like 50% and then we do want to put that back into position here. Okay, there we go. So this is a perfect match. We can bring this up again. And here we have the car. So we first are going to have the body, then we're also going to have wheel front, duplicated and wheel back. So I made three duplicates of this um, clean plate with the car, I'm going to make them red and just going to close this for now. So the body, we want everything to be separate. We basically want to take our car apart just so we have um, more things to work with later on. So um, as we're going to explode the car, the car is going to fly up a little bit in the air. And when it comes back down on the floor, you do have some kind of suspension of your wheels. Uh, so we might want to make that as realistic as possible. So we're going to bring the body on top, obviously, because that's going to cover up the wheels. And then we're going to the pen tool and we're just going to mask around our car. And there we go, we have the body. So now what I wanna do is create a new solid layer and this is going to be like the fill uh, caps and we're going to click in the color for like the darker tones right here. We're going to disable this and basically all I'm going to be doing is just fill up this space. That's looking all right. We're going to bring that below our body, enable this, make it trim it until here. And then we're going to parent this with the pick whip tool to the body. So for the body, we're going to make this yellow now so we know what is part of the body. And I'm also going to make sure that we're hovering up enough here. And 
And for the fill caps, we can actually bring this below the wheels because this is the part of the inner body. And uh, right here, you can see that this moves along even though it's in a different uh, level of the layers here. So that's what we need. Then we have to go to the wheel in the front. We're going to use our pick whip tool again and we're just going to key out the wheel. And then if you really want, you can disable all of these layers and choose a new solid layer. Choose a color on the shadow. Disable this, bring this on top, call this shadow. And we're going to make a mask like this here. And then another mask like this. Enable this, press F on the keyboard. So the first mask is going to be like at 30 pixels and this one at five and five. There we go, so that's our shadow. Obviously you could do the same thing for this and try to match that as well. So we can duplicate the shadow layer. Uh, this is going to be soft shadow. Disable these two layers. And we're going to key around that. And it doesn't really matter too much if it's going to look a little bit different. So what we're going to do is like click another new mask over here. And this we're going to set it to subtract. And then we're going to click on our layer, layer solid settings. And pick this color right here. And that's looking all right. So we are going to enable the soft shadow. And as you can see, we just subtracted this mask from this layer, from this mask. So we're going to press F on the keyboard and just feather this quite a bunch and bring this below the other shadow, enable the other shadow. And now we have something like this. Uh, we can also feather this just a little bit. So we have something like that and press T on the keyboard to lower it quite a bit. And now if we enable everything, we have a car with shadows. And obviously you can spend more time to make it look perfect because obviously it's not exactly the same as the other one. So it does have more blue in this tint here. So we can go ahead and change that. It's all up to you. I'm going to let you play around with shadows. We're not going to waste much more time. So we're going to make sure everything is trimmed. Here the explosion is going to happen and maybe towards the end we want the shadows to be introduced. So everyone already forgot about how the previous and the real shadows look like. So that's not a big problem. So we're going to press T on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch for the opacity for the shadows, go a little bit um, backwards and set it to zero. And basically because of the explosion, uh, it's going to light up your scene so much that you're not going to see those shadows. And then afterwards they're going to come back in once the uh, explosion vanishes. Okay, so now we wanna work on the animation for the car. So we're going here to the beginning. Obviously, when an explosion starts from the bottom out, it's going to explode upwards and give that kind of momentum on the car. So what we wanna do is first, we're going to click on our wheels and parent them to our body as well. So now if we move our body, our wheels are going to stick with it. But if we're going to move our wheels, our body is not going to stick with it. So that's what we need. Um, and then we're also going to press Ctrl R on the keyboard and we can use these guides to know where our wheels have to land. So that's like right here. Our first wheel on the first one, our second wheel on the second line. So now what we wanna do is click on our body and we're going to uh, make sure that we press P on the keyboard and click on the stopwatch just so we have the base locked here. So, but before we do that, actually, I do wanna move my anchor point by going to the pan behind tool and move my anchor point to like the center of my two wheels. So you have the two wheels, you have that bar in between those two wheels. You wanna try and find that center, kind of just think about it. And we're going to kind of explode the cart upward, but like, because the engine is heavier than the back, it's going to explode upwards from the front. And that's how I saw it in reference footage a lot. So that's what we're going to be using. Press P on the keyboard to see the position tag right here. Hold shift and press R on the keyboard so we see the rotation. And we're going to click and uh, on both of these stopwatches and we're going to bring these backwards. So we're also going to bring them and actually copy them and paste them here. So we have them at this location and at this location. 
go one frame forward, here it starts exploding. One, two, three, four maybe. And in four frames, we want our car to do this. So we're going to bring it up and tilt it over just like this. I don't know if this is too much. We're going to play with that. It's going to do like this and then it's going to come down again. But when it comes down, just before it actually comes down, we want this to copy and paste it right here, but bring it down more than it needs to be. But we actually want our wheels to be on the same level. So now we're going to click on our wheels here, press P on the keyboard. And right here at the end, we want our wheels to be in the exact spot and at the beginning as well, in the exact spot. So we have these keyframes. Right here, we actually want these to be a little bit lower because of the suspension. And then they come here, they bounce up a little bit. So we want to bring them up to those lines. And now we have like the suspension kind of releasing the tension here of the wheels, flies up, bounces back down. And actually bring this over a little bit. Just copy and paste these uh, last keyframes and paste them over here. So. There we go. So we have the same value. And with that, we can kind of bring it up a little bit more than it's needed and bring these down. So that way we have like a little bit of a bump. So now, of course, it's up to you to play around with the timing. So you can select all these keyframes and with the Alt key and clicking, you can actually drag them to be longer in duration. So boom, we have a nice bump here. Um, let's see what we have. So this can happen a lot quicker. We can actually right click keyframe assistance, easy ease. So we have boom. Okay, that's that's looking all right, but it has to come down faster. So we're going to bring these over here. And of course, play around with this. It's not going to be super visible because we have an explosion on top of that, but it's just to give those little hints of realism in our shot. So play around, make this perfect. I'm going to let that um, up to you. Um, we're also, we already have something close enough. So now we're going to enable motion blur for all these layers. And when it moves up, you're going to see this motion blur, which is going to make it look more realistic. going to click on our body we can disable the motion blur for now um, because that makes everything slower we're going to click on a body and we're going to apply the liquify tool right here and actually this is um, effects console from video copilot uh, which is a free uh, plugin but it just allows you to find effects quicker with the control space on your keyboard uh, you can also just go ahead and go into the effects and presets right here and find your effects right here so it's up to you, but it's just a lot faster to do it like this. So the liquify tool, we're going to apply that. We're going to click here on the liquify tool and we're going to make some bumps. So here you can kind of make bumps of your car because it exploded. Uh, we can kind of mess it up entirely. So we can play around here with the top part and just make it completely broken. If you even want, you can jump into Photoshop completely bust your car, maybe take parts of other cars that are actually broken and kind of blend them in, in Photoshop to match with your car. You can do those things. That's up to you. I'm just going to be using the liquify tool, just showing you what's possible. Just try to make your car completely demolished and it's going to look boom. Your car is completely broken. Then we have um, this fire, we need it later. We have the dirt blast. Let's start with a dirt blast, why not? So this is going to be in our background. We have that here, we're going to bring that over. Bring that over here. Just to, we don't really need these anymore. So control dot comma, there we go. And we can key out our dirt blast. Subtract this like that. We want to spawn it here, somewhere here. We can cut off the first part. And it's a little bit slow, so we're going to right click time, time stretch, maybe 70%. 
that's looking all right. Now we're going to apply a tent effect to our dirt blast. We're going to take like dark parts from our footage. Uh, so maybe something like this and maybe some of this. And then we can just lower this and that's going to blend it in a little bit better with our scene. Okay, that's cool. Then we're going to bring in some of the dust front here. We're going to right click time, time stretch 60. Uh, we can apply a extract effect and just extract the blacks here quite a bit. And then the bottom part just kind of blend it out to the left. And then you have kind of this transparent and then we can apply a tint effect and we can again choose a few of our colors from the scene. So this one maybe, but just desaturate it a little bit. And for the white, we can use this part here and just make it brighter. There we go. So now we have some dust that looks fitting to the scene. And actually let's start it from here because it's an immediate explosion. So we can actually already start here. Okay, there we go. We can bring this over, we're still on the keyboard lower the opacity quite a bit, maybe the scale even. Okay, so that's looking pretty cool. Um, now let's import our befamed, or actually, first we have these exploding debris as well, so let's bring these in as well. Right click, time, time stretch, maybe 70% in this case. Click OK. That's going to be a little bit faster. And I'm also going to apply a motion blur effect to that. To apply a realistic motion blur, um, I do uh, recommend a plugin called RSMB. Uh, this is just one of the industry standards and it just does a really good job at faking motion blurs. Uh, you can use that or you can use the CC force motion blur uh, right here. Uh, we can also click on our dirt blast and just do the same thing here, RSMB. You can see that the dust looks a lot more realistic and a lot more integrated with some motion blur there. Uh, we have then the smoke here, we have the fire, fire and gas explosion. Let's import our gas explosion. We're going to offset that, maybe bring it here to the right position. And again, I'm also going to click on my pen tool and key out this part here. Press F and subtract it, just feather it a little bit. There we have it. We can now bring this in here. Maybe I think the explosion was meant to be a little bit bigger than it really is in this shot. So I'm going to speed it up because the bigger something looks, like in our giant video, if you have uh, seen that, uh, the bigger something is, uh, the slower it appears to move. So we have to speed it up if you wanna make it smaller in this case. So maybe something like 65%. Let's see what that is doing to our shot and look at that. So we have uh, this dust explosion actually. Maybe we wanna bring that below our body. I'm not sure, let's play around. But just because we bring this below our body, you can see that it actually looks like our car is 3D. It has a little bit in the bottom, a little bit on the top, and that just looks a lot more integrated. And now what we wanna do with our gas explosion is basically the same thing. So what we wanna do is have our body and duplicate it, bring it all the way on top right here on our body. But here we wanna click on the ellipse tool and make a mask like right here. Or maybe you don't wanna make this mask, but you wanna make a custom one. And you wanna click with the pen tool, something like this, and then just remove this part. So subtract this part and then press F on the keyboard, feather it a little bit, and look there. Now you have like eight, it's, it's looking a little bit more integrated, just applying these small touches to your explosion. Uh, so now what you wanna do is go into that mask and go to the mask expansion and go like right here. Okay, so it's kind of wrapping around here. So we're going to create a keyframe for the mask expansion and a little bit more forward when the explosion gets more volume. We do want to kind of fill it up the entire space and there we go. So maybe not even entirely, something like this maybe we want it to be. But now we have the fire wrapping around our car and that makes it look a lot more integrated, a lot more 3D like. So 
so it's wrapping around nicely. You can even duplicate the dust uh, explosion and put it in front now. Oh, I'm actually duplicating the dust wave here. I want the dirt blast. But now what we want to do is maybe add another extract option here and also bring this out and maybe feather it a little bit so the fire is still coming through a little bit and then we want to apply like a tint effect to this uh, maybe we want to color this a little bit more towards the orange tones because the fire is kind of illuminating through our smoke uh, so you have to think about all these things So another thing that I've done actually, and that was just trying to kind of outsmart the system with the depth here, uh, is taking my front wheel and duplicating that all the way on top. So now we have our wheel here and okay, that's really weird. But what I was thinking, like the explosion is coming underneath our car and it kind of explodes outwards. Maybe it would be nice if it kind of goes through your wheels and then kind of wraps around it entirely just to give it a little bit more ID of depth. So I'm going to click on my pen tool, zoom in here and make like these little cuts in my wheels just where uh, you can see these cuts and we're just going to do that now. Press F here, we're going to select everything except our first mask, then the last mask and set these to subtract. So now you can see that our fire is coming through here. We're actually going to select them again, give them a little bit of a smooth, like maybe one pixel of feathering, then press M twice on the keyboard or actually click and open this again. We're going to click on the stopwatch for the mask expansion. And let me check, actually I want this to be like, like right here going to select all these keyframes bring them here and like move a few keyframes forward and expand this kind of grow outwards but as we grow it outwards we actually want to go back to the first one and also make a keyframe for the feather move forward expand it outwards but also increase our feather here while we do that and that's going to wrap around our wheel pretty nicely so just make sure that right here we don't have that much. Maybe like one, kind of make it small again. And just on the first mask, we also wanna apply some, some feather here. And also do the same thing here, so expand it. the other way around, just so it goes like around the wheel and it's gone. So very subtle things, maybe they require a little bit too much work for kind of the thing you're getting from it, but just when you see it so quickly happening, it's like, whoa, this explosion was in the wheel here and oh, something happened there. And obviously you can also play with the base of the gas here. Uh, maybe you don't want the entire gas ever to, to come until here uh, or you want to make it a 3d layer and kind of match it up a little bit more with the scene and actually go to the uh, to the gas the gas explosion 3d layer rotate it a little bit rotate it on Z a little bit then once you've done everything like this we want to take our gas explosion and duplicate it bring it on top here and here we do want to go for a curves and we want to kind of cut out a lot of the black here and bring out the highlights, something like this, but even more. And there we go. And then we want to use the extract here, take out the blacks, maybe even the reds, that's up to you. And then we want to apply a Gaussian Blur or a um, fast box blur. Increase the blur, toggle the switches and change it to an additive mode or to a screen mode. See what, what looks best here for you. 
And that way you get some uh, some glow in there. So maybe something like 100 or maybe we start first with 35 or 6. It was actually good. We're going to apply a tint on top of that and just give the tint um, a different color. We can also add an exposure tag on top of that, increase the exposure so you see it a little bit better. So what I also did is I imported actually a reference shot. So right here we have a reference um, footage. We can open it up and actually bring this here on the side, zoom in, go to our composition and look at the fire. This is a real fire explosion and this is our fake fire explosion. So we want to look at the reference here in the gas explosion. So we're going to like a moment, like right here, click on our gas explosion we're going to add a hue and saturation effect, go to the red channel and here we can boost the red and bring down the darkness. So we get that illuminating fire a little bit like this. You can go into the yellow and maybe shift the colors a little bit. also add the RSMB effect to our gas explosion of course to integrate that and we can also look at after the explosion to make sure like right here we have our dirt blast that we colored because of our explosion but obviously our explosion doesn't last forever so right here we're going to click on the map black and white too and right here we're going to map it uh, to these colors And there we go. So now we have the realistic explosion colors. And of course, we can lower this a little bit. Um, or we can actually add another tint effect on top of that and use our colors from the sky. So for the explosion glow here, I do want to duplicate it a few times and just play around with the blur radius. And there we go. And I do want to find the original explosion of the gas here, duplicate that. We're with the uh, 3D here, so we can actually close the reference once you're done with that. Uh, we want to rotate this towards the floor here, just like that. And then duplicate it. And with the Z also duplicate it towards here. And maybe scale it up. So basically what we're doing is filling the floor with this explosion. So once we have all these three, we can go layer, pre-compose this, call this reflection. And we can bring this all the way to the bottom here. And add a fast box blur. And set this to additive. And that way we get some uh, light from our explosion. So obviously our explosion should start here. So we're going to take our gas explosion and dirt blast. Basically everything. And just bring them forward a little bit until we have something like, okay, I like this part here, for example. So right here we do want to trim our wheel front because we don't want the wheel to be all the time in that shot there in the front layer here. So right here it should be gone. Okay. And of course you play around with the color grading, kind of match it a little bit better. I think they're a little bit too dark here, for example. Uh, they could be a lot brighter just because of, uh, of the Cur um, of the explosion, so I'm going to add a curves here, brighten them up and introduce a little bit of red in them and a little bit of blue. And obviously you animate it towards the end to be gone. So we would go for curves, go towards the end and then reset these values. And then one last thing that I also did was rotoscope myself out here uh, using the roto brush and then uh, I applied some reflection on myself, but basically uh, for that to uh, to do that, we're going to duplicate this footage all the way on top 
And all I did is I went to the Roto Brush tool. I keyed myself out as good as possible here. And I just did it for the entire video. So basically you'll have to do that on yourself. And then I went back to my composite right here. So now we have myself keyed out. I went for a new adjustment layer, apply the curves, brightened it up, introduced reds, decreased the blue. So we have an orange reflection. And I made sure that this was below my roto and set it to uh, alpha Med. And then for this, I also went to the ellipse tool and took just a frontal part of myself, like right here and feathered it. And then I just lowered the opacity over time. But basically this is the reflection of the explosion on me while I was doing the explosion. Obviously you have to do the rotoscope completely, um, but that's just a little tip. So we need to add a camera shake. We're going to apply a new adjustment layer. We're going to apply the wiggle preset V2, which you can download on our website for free. We're going to enable position, rotation, not the scale. And we're going to animate these uh, right here. So we're going to set it to like something. Okay. Right here. Set all of these to zero again. And like maybe right here, set these to zero again. So press U on the keyboard. Now we have something like this. Select the last keyframes, right click. Keyframe assistance, easy ease in. And then just drag these to the left and let's play. That's a little bit too much maybe. So we're going to set this to 50. Okay, that's cool. That's really cool. And now we want to add motion blur, of course, from that shake. So we're going into the transform here of the adjustment layer and disable the use composition shutter angle and set this to 360 or maybe 180 will be enough. And play it. The motion blur, everything that wasn't perfect is now blended in in a motion blur. So that's always my trick when visual effects end up uh, not going the way you want. Uh, but basically in this case, uh, we don't have that much cleanup to do. Uh, just perfecting the colors a little bit. But if you would do that, we would be here for hours. And as you know, I already did a live stream on this entire process from beginning to end. It's a live stream of six hours uh, where I was just playing around, figuring out how to, how to do this. So maybe it bounces a little bit too fast. If you want to change that, you can go to the body, press U on the keyboard, select all of these frames, alt and drag them a little bit to the right, play it again, see what it does. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, play around a little bit more. But that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to stay notified when we upload new videos. And also check out Action VFX, today's video sponsor. They have awesome tools. And and apart from that, I hope to see you guys and girls in the next one. Take care and goodbye. Inus out.